All right, we are recording. Praise the Lord. So hello, hello, everyone. I want you to meet my good friend, Miranda. Miranda, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Miranda. I live in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, um, and we are here to share, praise God, my testimony. Praise God. I am so excited. The Holy Spirit just laid on my heart, uh, the group that the Lord provided for us. I'm in Florida and we have a women's warrior group and we get together uh, for ministry twice a week, but we talk every day and the Holy Spirit supernaturally pulled us ladies strategically together to have a Jesus tribe. And we're all pretty much in different states, but we do see each other um, and the God provides times for us, but it is so interesting because the spirit, there's no space and time. He just provides and connects bonds. So I just praise God for Miranda and I'm excited as the Holy Spirit leads you to be able to share your testimony. So sister, do your thing. Um, so when I met these beautiful women, sisters in Christ, um, the Jesus and them knew I was a hot mess. I was a complete wreck from head to toe. Um, I lived in a world full of flesh. Um, I was... It's such a blessing that I was invited into this beautiful ministry. God. And because God was able to show me through our studies together and learning his word that I was in bondage. Praise God for coming out of bondage. For bondage. Praise God for deliverance. Um, Word curses were spoken over me for many years of my life. Um, I was told I had probably half of the mental health um, illnesses that take place in this world. And through learning the word and being with these beautiful women, I learned those were all lies. And those were curses that were spoken over me. And those put me into bondage. Would you be, if the Holy Spirit allows, of course, would you be willing to share when you say different type of mental illness? Because as we know, it's rampant in the world today because we're in a godless world. So the enemy is taking over our mind, that God comes to transform our mind and set us free. Can you share what that meant? Like as far as um, your struggles or um, things that you were battling with? Oh, yes. Um, I battled with identity. Um, I battled with anxiety. Um, I battled with PTSD things that um, that I had no control over, um, I blamed myself for, mm. um, depression. And uh, self-condemnation, is that the word? Of? You just condemned yourself. Yes, consistently. That made you think you hated yourself. Yes, yes. Um, I really thought that I was ruthless. I really thought that I um, would never be loved or accepted. I never thought I was good enough because we live in such a fleshly world, y'all. Like, yeah. the world has conformed to the outside of what somebody in their eye should look like. God made made each and every one of us in his amen sister his image amen 
Amen. So can you share what did it look like when I know when we all come to the Lord, the voices are so loud of the world, right? Because uh, we were ran by the world system for so long. But what does it mean like when you started reading your Bible and praying? Like, can you describe kind of like the transformation? Because we all start at little places and then there's something where the Holy Spirit just starts leading you. Because I saw with you and it was so beautiful like and I don't know if you knew it maybe you could share with me but like you started hearing the Holy Spirit and he was starting to give you inclinations on what to do can you kind of share when you say yes I think people of the world some can understand that they're in bondage but as far as Jesus people we 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 get that but what did the progression look like? Like, what does that mean to apply the word for Miranda? Like, what did you do? What did you do to stand in front of the mirror to combat your identity? If you want to share some of those things. Um, first and foremost, um, I always took it to the Holy Spirit. I always took it to God and I always searched his word um, because it, I mean, it was a shipwreck. Okay. I would, I went from standing in the mirror, telling myself every negative word you can think, I said it, I said it about myself, but through reading his word and the truth and seeing that we're made in his image, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that Yeshua is love, joy, and peace, and when he died, he gave us the Holy Spirit. So that lives within us. Hallelujah. Go, Jesus. Go, Jesus. That's right, sister. That's right. And um, you share with them prior when you looked at yourself in the mirror and you condemned yourself. Now, when you're in front of the mirror, what do you do? It doesn't matter what thoughts we hear from the enemy. That doesn't matter. What do you do when you look at yourself in the mirror? Absolutely. So um, if a thought were even to try to come in, I uh, automatically, I will confute it with God's word. But when I'm standing in the mirror, I will, I will say, I am made in the most high's image. Hallelujah. I am wonderfully made in his image. It is God. He, he put me here for a purpose. Um, and just like I had said before, that Yeshua's Holy Spirit lives in each and every one of us. And he is love, joy, and peace. So when I look in the mirror, I tell myself, you are made the most high's image. Yes. And that nothing but love, joy, and peace lives within you happiness um, I don't I no longer stand in the mirror and tell myself anything other than those beautiful things that God has wrote to us in his word so good it's so good and that's just one as Christians we have to understand that we use the word to fight right it is our sword but application is something that is a choice right we have that free will, but it's application. Are we going to use it, right? Are we going to use the word of God to be able to combat the lies from the enemy? Because a lot of people say, well, I don't really listen to him. If you don't have the Lord, the creator of the cosmos in you, and you're not listening to the word of God and applying it and understanding the covenant and understanding how we fight and why our mouth is such a beautiful gift to be able to defeat the enemy being silent I would like to propose how's that working out for you <laughs> right because when you're silent then you start listening to the enemy and then you start projecting what you're hearing so let's yep. not be silent 
Let's use our mouth to pray and war and declare and bind and loose the things that are ours, right? It's so important. It's so important. Miranda, one thing I want to be able to ask you, just your background, did you grow up knowing Jesus or what age were you when you came to the Lord? So um, my dad's parents, um, they took us to church. Um, and I remember going to church, but I also remember not, what's the word I want to look for? I want to say not being respectful of the church, if that makes sense. Um, because I know for me as a kid, you're like, oh, I'm going to church, you know? Um, yeah. And it was, it was just, um, and like you would go into, uh, what's it called? Nursery or Sunday school or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I, I always wanted to be with the adults and listen to the message, but mm -hmm. we were never allowed. Wow. Um, which, which was weird, but so, but like my dad's parents, yes, they, um, and then like they would read the Bible. Um, I believe my dad's mom was the first person that ever got us Bibles when we were little. Okay. Um, but like we would go to church with them, but that's the thing. We weren't taught yeah. the whole word. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's, I think, a big portion of a lot of people's testimony. They were saved, whatever that means to them, but they weren't presented the cost. There's a cost to serve Jesus, and then they weren't properly discipled, too, because if we're not properly discipled, we just run around just doing what we want to do, and then what are we doing with our salvation? Yeah, like I was taught, oh, just say say this prayer and you're saved and you're going to go to heaven. Yeah, I wasn't taught that every idle word um, we're going to take, we're going to have to ha account. For. I wasn't taught that. I wasn't taught that condemning yourself was... Um, not of the Bible. I wasn't taught that, yes, you're taught that your tongue um, has power, but you're not taught when you're speaking things um, that are not of God and not that you're not taught that those can cause curses upon yourself or your family. Do you, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, sister, I do. I do. It's I do. It's it's just not being taught relationship with Jesus. Mm. It is just the religious system yes. trying to fake people out that they're saved. Whenever it's mm. a life for a life, there's a transaction. It's fully Absolutely. turned over that we don't have any rights anymore, but we willingly give up our rights because mm -hmm. we love Jesus. Mm -hmm. We want to serve him, right? He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. So coming to where you're at now, Miranda, what changed in you? Meaning like a light bulb to be able to understand, oh, this isn't a religious system I signed up for. This is a marital relationship bride groom that I signed up for. Like, when did that happen? When did you start understanding like, okay. Um, the, the first, the first, um, so our beautiful sister, Bethany holds a Monday night class. Um, all based upon deliverance that Jesus um, gave us. And it's a it's based on a book and this in our class is called This Means War. And um when I first started it, I was kind of like um in denial still. Um and I feel like 
anybody that reads the book the first time would probably feel the same way. Um, you're in denial, like, this isn't, this is, but let me just tell you, um, by the, I don't even know, third chapter. Now, mind you, I'm taking my notes, I'm reading, I'm doing all of this studying and learning. Um, and I want to say, like, by the third chapter, I was like, whoa, this is, this is real. Like, this is real life. Like, we, in the name of Jesus, we have this authority to change the projection of, of our heart and our, our spirit. And, and then going through the class, like, we went through the class, and then we did it a second time. And um, we're doing it a third time, praise God. And yeah. I'm still learning more. Yeah. Like, I didn't, like, even though we had went through it twice already, like, we just had a class last night. And one of the things that was talked about um, as being a, a spirit was isolation. And praise God, I'm coming out of that. I didn't. I didn't realize I did that. I isolated my whole self. Um, then I went into the process of isolating with God. But then, by God, I now run for God and towards my Jesus family. Like, help. I need help. Yeah. yeah you're, the Lord just worked in you in a mighty way. You're a completely different person. And that's the process of deliverance, right? deliverance is the children's bread this is something that is for those right that we are part of we're called to inherit all that god has for us if it's in the bible i want it like i want to run after it i want to diligently seek it i want it so uh, if anyone's wondering the book is this means war it's by paul and clara hollis uh, it is a deliverance based book, which is all scripture based. Everything that they use is scripture based. So it's literally just teaching the full Bible. Who would have thunk it? It talks about the covenant. It talks about upholding the covenant, but it also talks about the relationship that now we're bound with a covenant with blood and that relationship. And really a lot of the things we wouldn't have to fall into if we would know the word of God, right? If we would even simply just look Deuteronomy 26 and 27, where it talks about the blessings and the curses. If we would just know these things, this is for today. The whole Bible is the whole Bible to be dissected and ate. And it's a love letter that he wants us to be able to talk to us. It's a decoding system for our heart that unwinds us from the world. And um, it's just something that I really felt the Holy Spirit in this time just teaching because I was also part of that. I was someone that got saved by Pentecostal fire, hell, and brimstone, but then, hi. So, okay, I just lived my life. I love Jesus, but like no one taught me how to be able to apply it to. And um, yes, we have the Bible. But if you see all throughout the Bible, there were people teaching. When we look at Rabbi Rambo, Rabboni, we look at they they follow them. They followed everything that they did. They copied them. And this is something that we need. We need disciples. And we also need to be able to find our tribe. So it's one of the most beautiful things to be able to find our Jesus tribe. Because myself, whenever I wasn't delivered, I isolated and I didn't trust anyone. And I was like, I could do everything myself. Oh, that was such a lie from the enemy. That was such a, I can't do anything by myself, anything by myself. So when I started to oppose that, those chains broke off to where I was able to be free. And it's a beautiful thing. Miranda, you did the same thing. It's it's so evident in your personality and the peace of the Holy Spirit that just transcends on you. It's beautiful, sister. It's so beautiful to be able to see. And you just so love the Lord that it just shines all over you, sister. So 
what are you excited about for for just the relationship like with the holy spirit because wow i feel like you you walked into such a new beautiful world now because lights are on that were never turned on and there's so much hope and abundance in your life and yes we still uh, strive and we push through and we endure that's part of being um, a follower of Christ but there's so much glory in it and what's on your heart um, for me I want to learn more I'm, I am just I want to just learn so much more and I know nobody is ever going to get it all right like nobody nobody ever in this world other than Jesus nobody will ever be perfect that, to walk this earth right so true, however true. I know when I walk outside I I don't want people to see me I want them to see his light and be turned to his word and his truth and his love and his joy and his peace. It's just so supernatural. It's such a, a feeling that you just don't know until you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But I just, and I just want to share that light with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, nobody deserves to be left in darkness. Nobody deserves to walk in darkness nobody deserves um to not be fed the whole entire truth um and it's it's amazing in all of my years of my life how much I didn't know but within just the last year of um being with these beautiful women on our bible studies and our um, classes, and then also our prayer time. It's, I don't, it's, it's supernatural of how much I've learned. Yeah. In a short amount of time. Uh, girl, we're just in a season where he's just fast forward and folks the hungry. All who are hungry come to him. The Lord's just doing beautiful, beautiful, supernatural things. And I love it. I love it. Um, do you feel, and you could just say no, we'll move on. Do you feel comfortable sharing what you were delivered of? I'll be more than happy to. Um, I was delivered from addiction. I was, I was delivered from, let's see, anxiety, depression, PTSD, OCD, ADHD, um, and then the biggest part was the just like the the mental uh, bondage that I would consistently condemn myself at, like. If, if there was a negative word you could say about yourself, I said it on a consistent basis. I would I would go as far as to record myself saying these things and watch it over and over again. Um, but God, praise God, yes. uh, he has delivered me from those things. I'm still being worked on. I'm still being pruned. And I praise God for um, every correction that he brings forth to me, um, every, I, you know, I was sitting here the other day and I said, Jesus, I just want to do so much more for you and your glory. Amen, sister. And you could also add that you were delivered from every medication too. Oh yes. I'm sorry. I was on, um, I think it was six different, um, medications. Um, at one time and praise God they were all for mental health praise God I am no longer taking any of them and it's been yeah. about six months I think yeah. since I've not taken any mental uh, 
health medication. That's like, and my, my whole heart in, in, in doing this and just sharing these testimonies that, oh, and also like, this is how wonderful the Lord is. We didn't know each other from Bob down the street. No. Not at all. The Lord no. just someone to to connect all of us together. And the Lord knows what we need. He so knows what we need. And he knows the community that we need to, mm -hmm. to grow in our Jesus family. You got to find your Jesus tribe. And we share this to be able to say that Jesus, it's it's very simple message. We have good news. We have good news. We have the, all, the, all the good news. We, we do. Know. And everybody else has it. It's just opening it up and studying and learning it with a heart posture of, of, of being willing to be open and honest with God. Because he, he knows it no matter what. Absolutely. 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 So simply we're here to say that a man... A beautiful, beautiful man named Jesus died on the cross over 2,000 years ago for yours, for me, for Miranda's sin, to where a transaction was made with the blood that he overcame death. So we do not have to be in bondage. He took on all of our sin, all of our bondage, our shame, our guilt, our addiction, our lust, fill in the blank and put it on the cross. He died for that so we might be free. So the good news is the kingdom is at hand, but we have to repent. We have to acknowledge Jesus is Savior and King. We have to turn from our life. We have to give him our life, a life for a life. And in return, he gives us everything. And we give him our sin and we get free. There's a cost. It's a life for a life. And you give your life to Jesus mm -hmm. and you surrender and you live your entirety to serve him. And uh, I just want to piggyback off from what you were saying about community. Um, I knew none of these women, not one of them. Um, but the Jesus in them and the love within them and their heart, so beautiful, Saul the Jesus in me and we're not they weren't willing to just be like oh okay thanks for coming to this bible study and and that was it no mm -mm, it it's not it wasn't like that it was just like you're running towards Jesus and he's got his hands and arms open so wide for you and they were so willing to just take me in and just love the hell out of me. Hallelujah. 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 I was taught that you see people as free. Doesn't matter what the current state is. And isn't that part of faith? <laughs> it's a substance of things that we hope for that we haven't seen yet, but I know that to be true. So when we see people, we see the best. We choose to see the best. And then, so Miranda, I just thank you, truly thank you for your time. Girl, you know, I love you with an everlasting love. I'm so grateful for you. I praise God for God in you. And I'm so proud of you and just your journey and your fight to be able to fight the good fight, sister. And I just thank you for just giving me your time today. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Yes. Thank you for your heart and the love that you, it's so pure. It's so pure. And I'm just so thankful and abundantly blessed by each and every one of you beautiful um, women in, of God because ooh, Jesus, Jesus knew. Jesus knew exactly what I needed and when I needed it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, my love, I'm going to end this and then I'll call you. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Love you.